Hi guys, Mrs. Glassy here. I am really excited about this. I found a way to um, film myself like the guy from Khan Academy. So I'm going to be writing on the screen to give you guys messages such as that. And you'll be able to follow along in your SABs and your homework journals. So every time we do math using one of these videos, you want to make sure you come prepared with a pencil, your student activity booklet, and your homework and remembering remembering journal. You also might want to bring some scratch paper, totally up to you. Whatever you normally did in the classroom is going to be great for this. Uh, we're going to start first with a short one. This is just a recap of what we did in class on 6-1 and 6-2. You probably already have these done in your SAB, but you might want to pull them out just because it'll be nice to see um, how you did. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the next page. I'm not always very confident with my page numbers <laughs> for your guys' booklet because I think my teacher manual is different than yours. So bear with me if the page number is wrong, but you should be in your SAB and it's 6-1. Another thing before I start, just so you know, if at any point you're going through these videos, you should always pause along the way if you want me to re like to rewatch something and re-explain it, or you can always log into our Zoom calls because at our Zoom calls, I can totally go over questions with you. Just make sure I know what lesson you're referring to and also give me a number and that way I can do some, some practice with you, okay? But otherwise, I'm just gonna kind of go through these answers. We'll figure it out. So chapter six is all about equations. It's a lot of solving for the unknown. So you'll see me a lot use letters and I just wanna remind you, those letters are called variables and they basically just represent what you're trying to solve, okay? So for example, on number five, um, the directions say, write an equation, use it to solve the problem, draw a model if you need to. So sometimes I'll draw a model, but other times I'll just start solving these problems. So let's look at this first one. It says a car odometer, that shows you how many miles you've traveled over a long distance. So it says a car odometer showed 6,437.5 miles at the end of a trip. How many miles did the odometer show at the beginning of the trip if the car was driven 422.3 miles? So you actually have two ways you could solve this problem or at least write the equation for it. What this is actually kind of showing us is that we have some number of miles that we started with and then we added 422.3. And where did we end up? We ended up with six, oops, <laughs> 6,437. Point five, But what you're probably figuring out is the way that we're actually going to solve this problem is if we take the miles that we ended with, which was 6437.5, and we subtract how many we added to it, which was that 422.3. And no matter what, you're going to come up with the same answer. That second one that I just wrote is going to make this easier to solve. So I'm going to now stack this problem just like you normally would paying attention to your place value. And then this should be pretty easy. So five minus three is two. Oops. In decimals, you just bring your decimal point straight down. Seven minus two is five. Three minus two is one. Four minus four is nothing. And then six minus nothing is six. So your answer will be 6,015.2 miles. <clears throat> can't fit that over there so I'm just going to leave it like that. <laughs> now number five, uh, excuse me, number six is about uh, fractions which can definitely get a little trickier uh, but we're just going to jump right in. So it says Enrique has two packages to mail. The weight of one package is 12 and a quarter pounds. What is the weight of the second package if the total weight of the package is 15 and an eighth pounds? So that sounds to me like we are going to take 12 and a, oops, we're going to take 12 and 1 fourth, and we're going to add some sort of unknown to it, which we'll just go ahead and call N, and all together that will equal 15 and 1 eighth pound. Uh, but that's not going to help us solve. We know to get rid of this, or to solve for N, we need to get rid of this 12th and a fourth. So really what this problem is asking us to do is to take 15 and 1 eighth, and subtract 12 and 1 fourth. That will help us find the difference between those two weights. 
I unfortunately can't solve this problem right now because those fractions are not the same. So I'm actually going to leave my 1 8 the same because I see pretty easily that I can change these, this 1 4th into something over 8. So I'm going to change, I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom, oops, that's kind of hard to see, by 2, so that this new problem becomes 15 and 1 8 minus 12, and then 1 times 2 was 2, and 4 times 2 was 8. So now I have common denominators I can go ahead and solve. However, this problem is still a little bit hard because I can't do 1 8 minus 2 8 I'm going to have to borrow. So I'm going to create this 15, make it a 14. And I'm going to add 1 to this 1 8, but it's not 1, it's actually one full group of fractions. And so that here would be 8 8 So I'm going to add 8 8 here. I know I'm getting a little messy over here, but that's how I did it in the classroom too. Why do anything different? <laughs> so this is now going to become 14 and 9 8 And now I can subtract that 12 and 2 8 so 9 eighths minus 2 eighths would be 7 eighths, and 14 minus 12 would be 2. So my answer to that problem would be that my second package weighed 2 and 7 eighths pounds. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to, oops, sorry guys. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down so I can use the bottom of this page for my last problem, which is about a track and field meet. Cody's time in a sprint event was 17.6 seconds. It says, what was Shayna's time if she completed the event in 1.08 fewer seconds? So that actually means she went faster, so she ran in a less amount of time. So that means we're going to do 17.6, and we are going to subtract 1.08. Fewer is your hint there. Fewer should mean subtraction. And that will tell us how far or how fast Shana went, and I'll show that with a letter N, just to represent the unknown. And then I'm going to stack this one because that's going to be easier to solve. So 17.6 minus 1.08. Now, if you'll remember, we have to make sure we have place value all taken care of here. So I'm going to put a little zero here to show that there's nothing in the hundredths place there, because that will then also show me that this isn't just me bringing down the 8. I actually have to do 0 minus 8, which I can't do. So I will be borrowing from this 5, sorry, from the 6 to make it a 5, and then I'll add 10 over to here. 10 minus 8 is 2. 5 minus 0 is 5. Bring down that decimal point. 7 minus 1 is 6, and then bring down that 1. So my answer here would be 16.52 seconds. That's how fast she went in the race. I'm going to go ahead and zoom off to the next lesson, which was 6-2, but it was kind of the same exact thing. We were still working on equations. We were still wondering uh, how to solve for the unknown and paying attention to uh, how to solve the problem, but also more specifically how to also write the equation that goes along with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Again, this is probably a lesson that you actually finished already. You're just kind of checking along with me to see how you did. So this is 6-2. Again, I think the page is 190, but you know better than I do because you have that one in front of you. So this one wants me to write an equation and use it to solve the problem. So I'm going to read number four, and it says how many individual pieces of cheese, each weighing one-fourth of a pound, can be cut from a block of cheese weighing five pounds? Well, there's a lot going on there, and this is actually one where I am going to draw the model to represent it for you. So here's the way that you need to think about it. You've, you're starting with a five pound block of cheese and they're telling you that you're going to be cutting it up into smaller pieces of cheese. So I already know that I'm going to have a number bigger than five because I'm taking that five and I'm splitting it up. But what I'm splitting it up into is one fourth pound pieces. So that tells me that I'm trying to find my five pounds of cheese cut up into one fourth pound blocks. And that's going to tell me how many little pieces of cheese I have all together. So, like I said, I'm going to draw this one. You guys know I am an expert drawer. I never make mistakes here with how perfect my models are. Uh, so if I make a mistake, then you must be wrong. Just joking. 
So these are my five pounds of cheese, and I'm going to cut them all into one fourth pound blocks. So I'm just going to cut them all into fourths. Do, do, do. And then I'm going to count up how many little one fourth pieces I have. This is obviously one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So all together, that would be five groups of four, which means all together I am going to get 20 pieces of cheese. Now, just to show you the actual division, if you'll remember, if you're dividing something up by one fourth, what you're actually doing when you divide it by one fourth is you're finding out that there are four pieces there and four in each of them. So rather than dividing by four, it's actually the same as just multiplying by its opposite. So that's five times four would equal that 20. If you remember, we did, I can't remember, I think it was King's Smelly Farts. I can't totally remember. And I hope your parents are watching this and listen to me just say the word farts. Uh, but that means that we keep the first number, we switch our operation, and then we flip our fraction. So that would be why that is five times four over one. <laughs> Excuse me, number five says an online business receives an average of 140 hours per, sorry, 140 40 orders per hour. At that rate, how many orders would the business expect to receive in 24 hours? Well, this one's pretty straightforward. I'm going to work 140 or, excuse me, I'm going to get 140 out orders per hour, and I'm going to work for a total of 24 hours, or I'm going to get that many orders. So that's going to tell me what I'm solving for here. So I'm going to stack and solve this guy. 140 times 24. Change colors because I can. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 4 is 16. Carry the 1. And 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Bring down your place value holder to show that you're done multiplying by the ones place. You're now moved on to the tens place. Two times zero is zero. Two times four is eight. And two times one is one. When you add those two together, you get 2,360 orders. Wait. Did I do something wrong there? Two times four. I don't think so. My answer key says something different, but I'm going to go with my gut. But if you watch this video and you realize that I did it wrong, well, you know, <laughs> you can make that change yourself. I love it. All right. We're just being flexible here, right, guys? Uh, number six is the last one I'm going to do with you. It says a supermarket owner's cost for a 26-ounce can of coffee is $6.75. A case of coffee contains 12 cans, so what's the profit? So this one's actually kind of funky. This is telling you that you've got... 12 cans of coffee, and it should have cost $9.49, but they actually purchased it for 12 cans of coffee at $6.75 a can. So they want to know basically what's their profit. That means how much did they earn after buying all this coffee. Well, this one's actually easier if you do something like this. If I'm going to be buying 12 cans no matter what, and each time I sold it for $9.49, but I bought it for $6.75, I'm going to find the difference between those two numbers before I multiply. I'm running out of time on my video, so I'm going to go ahead and just give you the answer on this one, and that means that I got a profit of $32.88. Okay? So the reason I wanted to zoom through that one real quick is I just want to show you that we are gonna have this at the end of every lesson, just like we did in class. So this page will show you kind of what your lesson, uh, or how you get to show me how you did your work. So on, for example, this first one was just a review. So it says to look over your SAB pages for 6-1 and 6-2. You could also just finish your homework and remembering pages if you didn't get those done. Or you can check to see on my weekly plan that I sent out if there are any IXL lessons that match this, maybe you could just go that route instead. But no matter what, you want to be showing some of this work. Uh, this is not something that you'll necessarily show to me unless you want to log into a Zoom call and ask some questions. Otherwise, I'm going to trust that you guys are doing your work, okay? I hope this works out, and go ahead and move on to lesson two when you are ready for it, not before that.